over the years, we developed a set of values in the company which said, what do we really stand for? And what we really stand for is if somebody wants a job globally or anywhere locally, we believe they should have an opportunity to do so. So what we do is we connect people with opportunities in the labour market. And so we um, attract people, we test them, we assess them, we train them, we develop them, and we put them into fair and safe jobs at good uh, salary levels. So our values really were that we should give people the opportunity to do that. And we've done some fantastic corporate responsibility contributions over the years, but we started off with the core of the business, which was putting people to work. So we um, developed numbers of programs in our 100 countries where we take people in marginalized communities, uh, disabled people, uh, people that have never had an opportunity to be educated, trained or developed and put them to work. Over the last 10 years, because our employees told us so, um, we really wanted to look at what we contribute to on a global basis. Uh, because all of our employees said in our annual survey, we're a great company, we put millions of people into jobs, but we don't really stand for anything on a global level. So we kind of thought real hard about it and we said, listen, if our core value is that we stand for giving everyone that wants it a decent job, we must be against the opposite of that. And the opposite of that are people that have never had an opportunity to work, people that have been abused or forced into labour, or people that have been trafficked. Um, so we came up with three global areas and decided to set out our global contribution platform. Uh, at the top level, it's uh, three causes that we work very strongly on. One is to train and develop and find a job for every one of the 38 million permanently displaced refugees in the world. Uh, and we have a partnership with the High Commission for Refugees to do that. Second one is, we said, uh, because we move so many people around in the world and we move people from one country to another, we see a huge abusive industry out there that traffics people into modern day slavery from places like the Philippines to China, from places like India and the subcontinent to the Gulf states and African countries. So we said, we think that should not happen. And we want to get involved, and this is what we started to do, with governments, global policing authorities, um, United Nations Office of Drugs and Crime, the International Labour Office, to put programs in place and recommend bilateral treaties between governments that would protect workers. That's the second area. And the third one, which I thought, we can knock this one off in two years, and this was eight years ago, stop human trafficking, full stop. Stop the um, movement by criminal gangs of up to 65,000 women and children and young men a day that are forced into prostitution worldwide. It's now uh, one of the biggest crime sectors in the world. We believe it just uh, took the number two spot for revenues for criminal activity. Number one is uh, gun running and uh, armaments. Second used to be drugs, uh, and the third used to be human trafficking. We think in revenue terms, human trafficking has just taken over number two spot, and it's fast approaching on number one spot. So clearly, we've got a huge global problem in this area. So in each of those three areas, we decided to form partnerships and work substantially on uh, addressing those, um, we, we think, human rights situations and working with governments and international organizations to do so.